If you love Winston Cup racing, you got to read Winston Cup scene. And welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. But in that moment, all I wanted to do was hit that man in the face. When people thought I was scared, when in fact I was just educated. The sport of NASCAR has had a plethora of underdogs, one of those being Lake Speed. The name Lake Speed is such a racer's name. Just the fact that his last name is Speed brings that up. Back in the day, he was making a name for himself in NASCAR, particularly as one of the premier underdogs. Up to the 1988 season, he was a driver owner who had just turned 40 years of age, but that's not the whole story. Back in the day, Lake Speed was a karting legend. He even won a karting championship back in the day over the late Ayrton Senna. He progressed throughout his racing career and eventually got to NASCAR, and although he had tremendous success in go-karting, he never came close to that success in NASCAR. Still, racing in the Cup Series for 20 seasons with 75 top 10s and a career average finish of 20.9 is nothing to be ashamed of. Even with limited funding, he was able to carve out some good runs over the years, but he was also known for his horrendous wrecks. But on March 27th, 1988 at Darlington Raceway, the entire NASCAR world would finally know the name Lake Speed for all the right reasons. The 1988 Trans South 500 had clear skies with the Winston Cup Series getting ready to go 367 laps around the 1.3 mile paved track. On the outside of row 4, next to Rick Wilson, sits Lake Speed. His start to the 1988 season has had mixed results. Sandwiched between finishes of 38th and 37th are a 6 at Richmond and a 2nd place at Rockingham. Coming in this race 14th in the standings, the team was looking to make a statement that would propel their way back into the top 10. But before any of that took place, chaos ensued. On lap 6, Kyle Petty blows an engine and causes the first big one of the day, which collected his legendary father, Richard. Only 8 laps in and Ken Schrader sits out front. But before we go green, you gotta get a quick look at the Hardys cam. Even back in 1988, they had to get their money. On the ensuing restart, Dell Sr. and Ken Schrader continue to go at it until Ken Schrader gets up into the seven of Alan Kowicki, takes himself out, and causes the second big one of the day. Keep in mind, we are only 18 laps in and two major accidents have taken place. This time we have the Xurex cam featuring Alan Kowicki. Those who complain about too much product placement, well, keep in mind they had it back in the day too. Anyways, the race finally gets going and we have a new leader. That leader is Davey Allison. This is actually his sophomore season. Owner Harry Rainier was able to secure Haviland to fund the entire 1988 season and the extra backing is paying dividends. Other contenders include Daryl Waltrip and the Intimidator Dell Sr. On lap 66, a caution comes out for a piece of debris on the track bringing everyone down to pit lane. Keep in mind, this was before pit road speed limits were a thing, so you you can go as fast as you wanted. Once the race got going again, it was Davey Allison and Dale Sr. 1-2 running up front. Both of their fan bases are showing up in full force, but that was early on in the race. The race eventually progressed and we were getting into the deep long runs and once those happened, Mark Martin and Jeffrey Bodine were out front. The new contenders were running 1-2 for most of the race before Mark Martin began to pull away. Just lurking behind them in third was the underdog of the day, Lake Speed. The reason I say underdog of the day is because he has solidly been running inside the top 10 all day and the top 5 for some of it. During the green flag pit stops, the team seemed to make the right adjustments. Eventually, they were able to pass the Rick Hendrick powered 5 team. But in the meantime, this was Mark Martin's race to lose. At one point, he pulled a solid 3 to 4 second lead over speed. The team and sponsors couldn't be any more happier, especially with the attention this run is getting. We talked to him earlier about do you set the car up for one corner over another? I look at the track as uh, overall and just comp it's just a compromise. I have to try to get good at both ends. And I, I try not to give up in either one. I want to be real good at both ends of the racetrack. And when I get the car with that feel that I'm hunting for, each time I'll be tough at both ends of the racetrack. I don't have to give up either one. As the race continues to roll on, green flag pit stops commence. The backdrop of this race is taking place during a fully fledged war. Not the kind of war you're thinking of, more of a tire war. The famous tire war within the sport of NASCAR between Hoosiers and Goodyear. 
at this particular track, Hoosiers seem to be the right tire to go with. Lake Speed has been out front all day on Hoosiers, and just before the halfway mark, finally cycles through the lead. Just as we have a tire war off the track, we also have one currently taking place on it. Lake Speed on the Hoosiers versus future champion and Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace on the Goodyears. For a brief moment, Rusty was able to take the lead with around 100 laps to go before engine troubles did him in. Close as they came out of corner number four. Look at the war of brass can they make it into turn one. Speed squeezes through. He gets in the front again as Bobby Allison and... Rusty Wallace runs side by side. The engine troubles were too much to mount. They rode around for a couple of laps before pulling it in, DNFing for the day. With the only real contender to Lake Speed at this point in the race out with engine problems, that was it. After that, nobody could touch him. It was unbelievable. Nobody had seen this dominant of a performance from an underdog driver ever. In the end, the owner driver led a race high 178 laps, scoring his first and only Winston Cup Series victory at Darlington. They're cheering for him as he heads down the backstretch, now with less than a half lap to go. The wins Kmart Oldsmobile is about to go into Darlington's victory lane. Here's the checkered flag. Lake Speed wins the Trans South 500. What do you, I can't say there's not anything to say. I've thought about this all my life. You know, what are you going to do when you finally won? And now I'm here. All I can do is say thank you, thank you, thank you, because there's been a lot of people involved to make this happen. It wasn't a, wasn't a thing by myself at all. And, and the most important thing, I think, is everybody has to realize that in my case, it was my faith in the Lord that brought, brought me through this, because if it hadn't been for that, 1986, I'd have packed it up and head back to Mississippi. To me, he's a driver that gets kind of forgotten in history. A certain generation of fans remember him, while some of us younger fans may not. But ultimately, when you look at it, Lake Speed is one of the greatest underdogs in NASCAR history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.